हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर मनीष पटेल एंड वी आर वाचिंग माय चैनल लेट्स डायसेक्ट एनाटॉमी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज इंफ्रा टेम्पोरल फोसा इन दिस टॉपिक वी विल कवर द फोर इंपॉर्टेंट शॉर्ट नॉट्स आउट ऑफ विच टू कैन बी आज एज अ लॉन्ग क्वेश्चन एज वेल ओके सो विदाउट एनी डिले चलिए शुरू करते हैं फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इंट्रोडक्शन इंफ्रा टेम्पल ऑफ होसा इज एक्चुअली इरेग्युलर स्पेस बिलो द जैगोमेटिक आर्च बिटवीन द साइड वॉल ऑफ द फेरिंग्स एंड रेमस ऑफ द मैंडिबल इफ यू रिमेंबर द ग्रेटर विंग ऑफ स्पिनोइड इंफ्रा टेम्पल ऑफ सर्फेस ऑफ ग्रेटर विंग ऑफ स्पिनोइड द पेंटागोनल शेप If you don't, uh, you can watch the video of Norma Bezalis, where I have clearly mentioned that area. So that area is nothing but it's a infratemporal fossa. It communicates with the temporal fossa through a gap deep to the zygomatic arch. The zygomatic arch or skull of temporal bone, which is temporal fossa, is in between the gap. The gap is through the temporal fossa. It also communicates with the temporal fossa. And it is also known as the parapharyngeal or lateral pharyngeal space. Pharynx ke laterally hai, dono side. That's why it is known as the lateral or parapharyngeal space. Temporal fossa is superior to the zygomatic arch, while infratemporal fossa situated below the zygomatic arch. Now the boundaries of the infratemporal fossa. Here you can see from the picture the ramus of the mandible and zygomatic arch are cut down to show you the space means infratemporal fossa here you can see from the picture this is the infratemporal fossa now the boundary is laterally ramus of the mandible so yahan pe aayega ramus of mandible that will come as a lateral boundary medially you can see this lateral trigeminal plate comes as a medial boundary anteriorly you can see this is the posterior surface of maxilla it comes as a an anterior wall this will becomes the posterior wall tympanic plate along with the styloid process the roof here is formed by the infratemporal surface of greater wing of sphenoid ye wala that pentagonal surface and the floor is open and it extends up to the level of the base of the मैंडिबल नीचे कुछ स्ट्रक्चर नहीं है बट इट एक्सटेंस अप टू दी लोअर बॉर्डर ऑफ द मैंडिबल सो दिस मच एरिया इट इज कॉल्ड इंफ्रा टेम्पोरल फोसा दिस द साइड एंड बैक व्यू यू कैन सी ओवर हियर जो फर्स्ट हमने बाउंड्री डिस्कस की वहाँ पे ये रेमस कट किया हुआ था जेगोमेटिक आर्च भी कट की हुई थी बट रेमस के अंदर का जो पार्ट है दैट विल बी दी इंफ्रा टेम्पोरल फोसा और ये बैक व्यू है हियर यू कैन सी दिस पार्ट इज कॉल्ड इंफ्रा टेम्पोरल फोसा हियर यू कैन नोटिस द मिडियल टेरिगोइड एंड लेटरल टेरिगोइड मसल्स आर देयर दिस इज द मिडियल टेरिगोइड दिस इज द लेटरल टेरिगोइड दिस इज द रेमस ऑफ मैंडिबल तो रेमस के अंदर की तरफ ये वाला पार्ट दिस इज द इंफ्रा टेम्पोरल फोसा नाउ द कॉम्युनिकेशन कहाँ कहाँ पे उसका कॉम्युनिकेशन है सो इन फ्रंट it communicates with the orbit through inferior orbital fissure aage ki taraf wo orbit ke sath communicate karta hai medially it communicates with the another fossa that is terigo palatine fossa through terigo maxillary fissure terigo palatine fossa is the another important five mark short note that we will discuss uh, later on right now just remember medially there is a terigo palatine fossa अबाउ एंड लेटरली उसके ऊपर और बाहर की तरफ इट कम्युनिकेट्स विद द टेम्पोरल फोसा थ्रू गैप डीप टू द जैगोमेटिक आर्च वेल अबाउ एंड मीडियली अंदर की तरफ इट कम्युनिकेट्स विद द मिडल क्रेनल फोसा थ्रू फॉराम एंड ओवल एंड स्पाइनोजम सो दिज आर द कम्युनिकेशन ऑफ द इंफ्रा टेम्पोरल फोसा नाउ द कंटेंट्स इन द कंटेंट्स थ्री मसल्स आर देयर the medial and lateral pterygoid muscles and a lower part of the temporalis muscles muscles of mastication jo humne discuss kiye the usme char mein se 
तीन मसल इंफ्राटेम्पोरल फोसा में आपको देखने को मिलेंगे द ब्लड वेसल्स दे आर मैग्जेलरी आर्टरी एंड इट्स ब्रांचेस मैग्जेलरी वेन एंड टेरिगोइड वीनस प्लेक्सस एंड दी नर्व्स आर मैंडिबुलर नर्व विद इट्स ब्रांचेस कोडा टिम्पेनी नर्व एंड ओटिक केंगलियन द मसल्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन मसल्स ऑफ मेस्टिकेशन इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन द वीडियो ऑफ मसल्स ऑफ मेस्टिकेशन यू कैन गो थ्रू इट आई हैव डिस्कस दैम इन डिटेल and they are very important for the theory as well as it viva the blood vessels the maxillary artery first we will discuss the maxillary artery in detail so here this maxillary artery is a separate five mark short note then in the nerves the mandibular nerve is there it is also a important five mark short note in the otic ganglion it is also a important five mark short notes so infra contents of the infra temporal fossa they are itself they have itself three short knots out of which maxillary artery and mandibular nerve can be asked as a long question as well okay so uh, here you can see from the picture this is the maxillary artery this is the mandibular nerve medial pterygoid lateral pterygoid muscles okay so first we'll discuss the maxillary artery a very 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 important five marks or you can say a long question it is the largest terminal branch of the external carotid artery it arises behind the neck of the mandible in substance of the parotid gland if you remember the branches of external carotid artery eight branches are there उसमें से जो टर्मिनल दो ब्रांचेस है द मैग्जिलर आर्टरी इज वन ऑफ इट्स टर्मिनल ब्रांचेस इन द लार्जेस्ट वन इट इज डिवाइडेड इनटू थ्री पार्ट बाय द लेटरल टेरिगोइड मसल मैग्जिलर आर्टरी थ्री पार्ट्स में डिवाइड होती है एक जो लेटरल टेरिगोइड के पीछे वाला पार्ट है बिहाइंड द लेटरल टेरिगोइड द सेकेंड पार्ट इज अब द लेटरल टेरिगोइड एंड थर्ड पार्ट इज इन फ्रंट ऑफ लेटरल टेरिगोइड okay so first of all the first part it lies behind the ramus of mandible that's why it is also known as the mandibular part it runs horizontally forward first between the neck of the mandible and spino mandibular ligament below the auriculo temporal nerve along the lower border of the lateral pterygoid the mm. branches from the first part of maxillary artery first part mein five branches hai second or third part mein six six branches hai means total 17 branches are there <laughs> yes you just have to literally mug up the branches or you can remember the diagram and remember the branches so uh, before going in detail about the branches i will show you the uh, picture this is the picture that you have to draw in the short note or a long question here you can see this is the external carotid artery which divides into superficial temporal and maxillary branches right so this is the maxillary artery it runs like this this is the lateral pterygoid muscle उसके पीछे का पार्ट है दिस इज द फर्स्ट पार्ट उसके ऊपर का पार्ट है दिस इज द सेकेंड पार्ट और उसके आगे का पार्ट है दैट इज द थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ द मैग्जिलरी आर्ट दिस इज द अनदर डायग्राम जस्ट फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग यू डोंट हैव टू ड्रॉ दिस पिक्चर यू हैव टू ड्रॉ द प्रीवियस वन दिस इज जस्ट फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ओनली ओके हियर यू कैन सी एक्सटर्नल कैरोटेड आर्टरी सुपरफिशियल टेम्पोरल एंड मैग्जिलरी आर्टरी द फर्स्ट पार्ट इज ओवर हियर इट हैज फाइव ब्रांचेस डीप ऑरिकुलर एंटीरा टिम्पेनिक मिडल मैनेंजियल एसेसरी मैनेंजियल और नीचे है इन्फीरियर एल्यूलर ओके सो डीप ऑरिकुलर ब्रांच इट सप्लाइज द एक्सटर्नल इकोस्टिक मीएटस टिम्पेनिक मेम्ब्रेन एंड टी एम जॉइंट द सेकेंड वन इज एंटीरा टिम्पेनिक आर्टरी इट सप्लाइज द मिडल ईयर द इन्फीरियर एल्यूलर आर्टरी 
it gives lingual and myeloid branches and enters the mandibular canal and gives branches to the mandibular mandible as well as the root of the each tooth middle meningeal artery it supplies the bones of the skulls as well as meninges and the accessory meningeal artery it enters the cranial cavity through foramen oval and it supplies the meninges and infratemporal fossa so these are the five branches with their area of distribution the second part which lies over the pterygoid muscle it is also known as the pterygoid part it runs upward and forward superficial to the lateral pterygoid muscle here it gives the six branches the two deep temporal branches which supplies the temporal muscle two pterygoid arteries it supplies the medial and lateral pterygoid muscles one mesenteric branch which supplies the mesenteric muscle and one buccal branch which supplies the buccinator muscles means jo muscles of mastication hai temporalis lateral pterygoid medial pterygoid mesenter unko hi supply karti hai aur in addition buccinator muscle ko to jo muscle ko supply karti hai same uska naam waise hi hai okay here you can see from the picture this is the second part it has posterior deep temporal and anterior deep temporal two branches it supplies the temporalis muscle upper pterygoid lower pterygoid it supplies the medial and lateral pterygoid muscle this is mesenteric branch supply the mesenteric muscle and buccinator branch supply the buccinator muscle so total these are the six branches from the second part of the now the third part it goes through the pterygopalatine canal that's why it is known as the pterygopalatine part it passes between two heads of the lateral pterygoid and through pterygomaxillary fissure to enter the pterygopalatine fossa ultimately wo pterygopalatine fossa mein jaati hai aur just in front of pterygopalatine ganglion wahan pe rehti hai the branches here there are six in number this is the third part it has descending palatine pharyngeal artery to pterygoid canal sphenopalatine infratemporal and posterior superior alveolar so these are the six branches from the third part of the maxillary artery so the first is posterior superior alveolar artery it supplies the upper molar and premolar along with the maxillary sinus the second one is infraorbital artery which passes through the infraorbital fissure and then it supplies the orbital muscles lacrimal sac maxillary sinus and upper incisor as well as canine teeth the third one is greater palatine artery it supplies the mucosa of the upper gums palatine glands laser palatine branches supplies the soft palate and tonsils then the pharyngeal branch supplies the nasopharynx auditory tube and sphenoidal sinus artery of the pterygoid canal supplies the pharynx auditory tube and middle ear and the sixth one sphenopalatine branch supplies the lateral wall of nose paranasal air sinuses and nasal septum okay so that is all about the branches of the maxillary artery their course and their area of distribution the applied anatomy the anterior branch of middle meningeal artery is torn in fracture of side of the skull following a blow in the region of pterion it results in the formation of extradural hematoma that overlies the motor area of the cerebral cortex and the compression of this motor area of the brain may lead to the hemiplegia means loss of the movement of the opposite half of the body we have discussed the pterion and its clinical significance during the osteology practical so uh, you can also revise that video of norma lateralis okay here is the table which will help you to remember the first second third part the course the branches and the area of 
distribution this is just for quick revision from the table the next content is pterygoid venous plexus the all the contents i have mentioned in a very short form for just one slide only okay so the first content there is pterygoid venous plexus it is located partly between temporal and pterygoid muscle venous it is venous equivalent of maxillary artery actually anteriorly it anastomoses with the facial vein rather deep facial vein if you remember the lecture of face i have shown you this pterygoid venous plexus and how it drains the blood from the veins of the face you can watch that video to uh, revise this part superiorly it anastomoses with the cavernous venous sinus through the emissary veins here you can see from the picture this is the pterygoid venous plexus the next important content is mandibular nerve this one itself is a 5 mark short note and many times it was also asked as a long question okay so very 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 important for theory as well as the dissection viva so mandibular nerve it is the largest of three divisions of the trigeminal nerve it is mixed type of the nerve consisting of both sensory and motor fibers it is a nerve of first pharyngeal arch and that's why it supplies the structures derived from that first pharyngeal arch pharyngeal arches that we'll discuss in embryology lecture right now just remember it's a branch nerve of the first pharyngeal arch now the course it begins in the middle cranial fossa through two roots a larger sensory root and a smaller motor root uh, if you seen the video of cranial fossa i have shown you in the middle cranial fossa the area where the trigeminal ganglion is situated over the petrous temporal bone if you don't remember you can watch that video you can better understand and you can better visualize the course of this as well as the maxillary nerve also so before watching this video you can watch that cranial fossa video so you will better understand the course of mandibular and maxillary nerve how they arises and how they passes the larger sensory root arises from the lateral part of the trigeminal ganglion and leaves the cranial cavity through foramen oval if you remember structure passing through foramen oval it passes m a l e male where m is for mandibular nerve the smaller motor root arises from the pons it lies deep to the trigeminal ganglion and also to the sensory root and it also passes through foramen oval to join the sensory root and thus forming the main trunk ultimately the larger sensory or smaller motor root hai wo ek dusre ke sath join ho ke fir main trunk banate hain the relations of the trunk in the infratemporal fossa so jo trunk hai mandibular nerve ki uska relations so medially there is a tensor valley palatine muscle and otic ganglion laterally lateral trigeminal muscle is there posteriorly middle meningeal artery and anteriorly again lateral trigeminal muscle so here you can notice jo mandibular nerve ka main trunk hai wo teenon taraf se muscles se gira hua hai aur piche ke part mein meningeal middle meningeal artery hai so here you can see from the picture this is the larger sensory root smaller motor root they join with each other to forms the main trunk aur jo main trunk hai foramen oval mein se phir nikal ke niche jaati hai aur this is the mandibular nerve jo trigeminal ganglion uske three divisions this is the mandibular division this is the maxillary division and this is the ophthalmic division here is another picture now the branches of the mandibular nerve this slide 
have a very 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 important in this section viva as well as one liners and the short knot as a part of a short knot as well so everyone have to mug up all the branches for this section viva so mandibular now branches within the infant of fossa they are divided into three groups the branches arising from the main trunk branches from the anterior division and from the posterior division so jo main trunk hai usme se jo branches nikalti hai they are spinous nerve and nerve to medial pterygoid muscle before going forward i'll show you the picture here you can see this is the main trunk so branches arises from the main trunk they are the meningeal branch and now to medial pterygoid aur uske baad it divides into the anterior and posterior divisions okay like this so this is the anterior division and this is the posterior division right so main trunk a meningeal branch or a spinous nerve and now to medial pterygoid from anterior division buccal branch which is a sensory mesenteric nerve deep temporal nerve and now to lateral pterygoid all three are motor if you remember the chapter of muscles of mastications here you can see all four are there all where i mention all the muscles of mastications are supplied by mandibular nerve through their different branches उसमें डिटेल में मैंने बताया हुआ है अगर याद नहीं है तो यू कैन गो एंड वॉच दैट चैप्टर द पोस्टीरियर डिविजन इट हैज थ्री ब्रांचेस ऑरिकुलर टेम्पोरल लिंग्यूअल एंड इन्फीरियर एलवियल नाउ ओके यू हैव टू ड्रॉ दिस पिक्चर द ऑरिकुलर टेम्पोरल नाव नाव इन शॉर्ट अबाउट द इम्पोर्टेंट ब्रांचेस auricular temporal nerve arises by the two roots it encircles the middle meningeal artery and divides into numerous branches yahan pe aap dekh sakte ho this is the auricular temporal nerve sabse pehle wo it encircles the middle meningeal artery then it divides into numerous branches this one is the inferior alveolar nerve okay uh, the largest branch from it passes backward and between the neck of the mandible and spinomandibular ligament mandible ke neck aur ligament ke beech mein se jo large branch hai wo jati hai piche ki taraf and supplies the sensory fibers to the auricle and temporal region the parasympathetic secretomotor fibers supplies to the parotid salivary glands and articular fibers supplies to the tm joint this is a very brief about auricular temporal nerve the second important nerve or a branch is inferior alveolar nerve it is the larger terminal branch of the posterior division it is the mixed type of the nerve it enters the mandibular foramen and it passes through the mandibular canal i have clearly shown you the mandibular foramen and canal in the practical video of mandible If you don't remember, you can watch that part also from that video. It forms the inferior dental plexus, which sends the branches to all the mandibular teeth. The terminal branch of the inferior alveolar nerve is mental nerve. If you know, I have told you that the mandibular foramen from the mandibular foramen enters and it comes out through the mental foramen, so it becomes mental nerve. it passes through the mental foramen and supplies the skin and mucous membranes of the lower lip skin of the chin gingiva of the mandibular incisor teeth it gives the other two branches they are now to mylohyoid and incisive branch the third content important part is lingual nerve it's a smaller terminal branch it lies anterior to the inferior alveolar nerve ke aage hoti hai it provides sensory supply to the anterior 2/3 of the tongue floor of the mouth and lingual 
gingiva it enters the mouth between medial pterygoid muscle and ramus of mandible ke beech mein se mouth mein enter hoti hai it passes the undercover the oral mucosa inferior to the third molar teeth so these are the three important branches from the posterior division of the mandibula now the next important branch is coda tympani now actually it's a branch of seventh now carries the taste sensation from the anterior two third of the tongue it joins the lingual nerve in the infratemporal fossa it also carries the secretomotor fibers to the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands so ye actually branch facial now ki hai but infratemporal fossa ke andar hai or it is an association with the lingual now to supply the tongue that's why i've uh, mentioned this four lines yahi nahi abhi aur suniye then the next content of infratemporal fossa is otic ganglion it is also a very short but very important five mark short knot otic ganglion it's a small parasympathetic ganglion connected to the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve and it provides the relay stations for the secretomotor fibers to the parotid gland the parotid gland mein jo fibers jaate hai secretion ke liye wo pehle yahan pe stay karta hai it's a relay station any ganglion are the relay stations for the particular nerve fibers it's a very small 2 to 3 mm in size located in the infratemporal fossa just inferior to the foramen oval and medial to the mandibular nerve and posterior to the medial pterygoid muscle uske jo presynaptic parasympathetic fibers hai they are derived from the glossopharyngeal nerve and they then synapse with the otic ganglion aur jo post synaptic fibers hai they are secreted or secretory to the parotid gland it passes to the otic ganglion through auricular temporal nerve so here you can see from the picture ग्लोसोफेरेंजियल नाव में से उसके प्री साइनेप्टिक फाइबर्स जाएंगे ऐसे करके ठीक है अल्टीमेटली इनटू दी ओटिक गेंगलियन और वहाँ से भी ओरिकुलो टेम्पोरल नाव के थ्रू पोस्ट साइनेप्टिक फाइबर्स जाएंगे पैरोटिक ग्लैंड में टू तो स्टिमुलेट दी सलाइवरी सिक्रीशन ओके एप्लाइड एनाटोमी द लिंग्यूअल नाव is at a greater risk during the surgical removal of the impacted third molar teeth and removal of the submandibular salivary gland to so, agar third molar aap extract kar rahe ho ya submandibular gland ka koi bhi resection hai to usme lingual nerve ko preserve karna bahut zaruri hai kyunki uske cut hone ke chances hai and inferior alveolar nerve block ia block i mentioned this ia block during the uh practical video of mandible also so if you want you can watch that video it is the most common nerve block performed in dentistry to carry out the dental procedures on the mandibular teeth koi bhi mandibular teeth remove karna hai to inferior alveolar nerve ko block karna padega to anesthetize that particular teeth and to remove it the anesthetic agent here is injected slightly superior to the entry of the inferior alveolar nerve into the mandibular foramen okay so uh, that is all about the infratemporal fossa and its content the content itself have three important short notes so that is all about infratemporal fossa hope you like this video if you like the content hit the like button subscribe the channel and share it to your friends see you in the next video till then goodbye thank you